There we go. Uh, so yeah, in spite of all of the uh, working shenanigans, I have actually managed to find the time to play some video games, although not a ton. Not like for enough of a stretch of time to be worth uh, streaming anything. But yeah, I checked a little. I checked out a little bit of Caladrius Blaze, which is uh, a game I think I would heartily recommend to shmup fans and I guess just perverts in general basically although the whole stupid clothing damage system in that game is just completely unnecessary and uh, uh, what's the word for something that's unnecessary uh, whatever we'll go with unnecessary but uh, I think there's an option to turn it off in the uh, menu if you're not into that kind of thing the whole clothing damage. They're sneaking it into snow, so many different genres these days in the Japanese video games. No, not superficial. It's uh, superfluous. That's it. Superfluous. That is the word I was thinking of. You almost, you, we got a little closer step by step. Uh, but yeah, uh, for now, uh, we're going to be playing some Tales of Majeal. And... Yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, we last left off with... Man, it was like a full week ago since the last time I played this. But I believe whoop, uh, we were in the middle of a Paradox Mage run. Oh yeah, that was a step by step. That was one from uh, from Sonic. Man, I'm just great with like the remembering words and stuff today. Wait a second. Okay, there he is. For some reason, my... Uh, my most recently played save file. None of these are even for like the right version either, or at least most of them aren't. But yeah, this is, they seem to be in alphabetical order, actually. Must have just been a coincidence then that uh, the runs before this were all at the top of the save list. Step by step, that was one from Sonic, that Sonic DS game, Sonic Burst, Sonic something like that, I don't know. Good game, though, and a really good song. One from... Oh, yeah, that's the other... Uh, the uh, Another Jasu News, yeah. I started following uh, Hideki Naganuma on Twitter, who was the composer for whatever that Sonic game is. It wasn't Sonic Burst. It was Sonic... Uh, this is going to bug me forever if I don't look it up. It was Sonic... Brr. It wasn't Sonic Breakfast. <laughs> uh... Sonic DS was Sonic Rush. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, for whom, uh, for which uh, Hideki Naganuma was the composer. He does some great... Yeah, the Jet Set Radio guy. Uh, that's the, yeah, same guy. Oh yeah, speaking of music, we're just like moving from topic to, to topic, to topic here. Uh, yeah, extended the old uh, video game music playlist a little bit here. In particular, I found a classic, a sort of a retread, or a, uh, a comeback, if you will, of uh, one that featured in my Link's Awakening plague through. So without any further ado, why is my hotkey not working? There we go. There we go. Okay, so yeah, we're going to be... This is the kind of day it's going to be. With our, uh, yeah, Tales of Majel stream right here. Um, so I think we probably just keep going with the Critical Strike power. This seems like a crazy good passive, and I wasn't exactly enamored of any of the others. It increases steadily, too. You get that two points, two percent chance per point. So yeah, I think we're just gonna finish that. Do we go for this thing? Oh, that's an activated talent. Oh wait, no, okay, so it's, this seems like a passive-active hybrid right here. So yeah, basically whenever one of your spells would fail, this talent will prevent it from failing. But then, but then you'll have to, like, spend a turn triggering the anomaly later to sort of... Yeah put this thing back on cooldown and sort of flush the stack to let in the next one. 
I don't know if we need that just yet. We have not actually been having too much. Oh, right, we're putting points in this thing. What is this? Oh, yeah, stun resistance. Yeah, we just keep putting points, points, points into that because stun resistance is ridiculous. We'll maybe do... I don't know if we want willpower, really. We have all of the like resources we need, really. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to keep uh, up in cunning, actually, for some crit chance. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, we were on our way out of here. Okay, what items did we get? This one's just pure passive, so there's no reason not to put that one in here. And all of this looks like crap. Oh, except our current amulet is actually crap. I never actually looked at this thing. I just put it on because it was our... Ooh, 6% physical resistance. Still two constitution, blindness immunity, light, dark. That's tough. Physical resistance is really good. But I think we take that. I think we make that trade. Let me know if the music's too loud. It seems louder than usual, but not too loud for me. Oh yeah, I have... I have some form of water breathing right now, but I can't remember why. What do I have that's giving me water breathing? Is this it? Blink randomly. Yeah, for some reason I don't need to breathe underwater here, but I don't know what's actually giving me that ability. Oh, this is probably the one. Yeah, one of these uh, undead uh, lanterns here. Such a good item. One of the new items, I think, or one of the new possible properties that can roll on an item from the new expansion. So with that being the case, we can actually just, uh, actually just auto-explore the uh, lake for once. Oh, my. Why am I all blue? Oh yeah, that's that invisibility thing. Oh wow, that has a much bigger radius than I remembered. I don't even... It's been so long I don't even remember what my abilities do. So time skip was if I want to like take someone out entirely for a few turns. Oh yeah, all of all, also all of our spells are piercing, so we want to take advantage of that. Oh right, that's uh, that was the wrong thing we did there. Okay, I should prob it's I always think whenever I end up swapping my hotkeys, I always end up regretting it. At least in the short term. It's like, you know what, if this if this darkness beam or whatever is going to be like one of my main bread and butter spells, maybe I put it on like one of the lower keys. And now that I've done that, I keep hitting the wrong key whenever I want to cast it. The spell crit actually seems to have been a good strategy for us. We are one-shotting a lot of things that would not have otherwise been one-shottable. And it figures that right after we get that little bit of blindness immunity, we run into the dudes who start blinding us all the time. Which you'd think would be a good thing, except the blindness immunity doesn't actually trigger that often. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting the way that this spell actually works. We just club that guy over the head with the staff. Okay, here we go. Which which version? Tier 3, Jesus. Okay, so we lose Cunning and Con. That kind of hurts a bit, but we gain that power. We gain Arcane Resistance Penetration, which I don't care about at all. The damage is irrelevant, because that'll just change once we, uh, once we attune the staff. 
Vim we don't care about, all that stuff we don't care about, and spell power and spell crit. Yep, we're putting this on. And the rest is garbage. Oh, here we go. I think this is the first time we've rolled the uh, alternate version of uh, the Floor 2 Lake. Okay, so this will be interesting. Uh, I was going to go attune my staff, but I guess that has a cooldown for a few turns. Yeah, so now we're going to be... Not only is the region... Is the lake, is the floor flooded, which uh, Floor 2 typically isn't. But, uh, yeah, we have a bunch of uh, bullshit eldritch abominations to deal with. Oh, boy. So, yeah, this guy has tons of health. There we go. Yeah, there's some really... It's, it's not even... The underwaterness... Like, the fact that you're underwater is an inconvenience, certainly, with this... this uh, version of the dungeon but uh, even more than any of that it's the like dramatically increased difficulty of the enemies in this version yeah there's some really nasty shit in particular I think it's the scorching something or other Yeah, that's fair enough. Do what you gotta do. Although, actually, I forgot. I should have my uh, stream labs up here, because I was getting some dropped frames uh, before the stream. Everything seems to be okay now, though. Oh, no. Uh, here we go. Okay, I was running into mouse issues when I was uh, sort of clicking outside the window there. Oh, yeah, speaking of which. Oh, no. What have I done? Okay, there we go. Just had to move a little bit. But yeah, because yeah, I was having issues with my mouse um, in, last, in the last couple streams and just it, uh, like, stuttering, basically. Turns out it was a mouse pad issue. I've got a new mouse pad and that seems to have resolved itself. So we are at peak clicking performance here in this... Oh, shit. Abyssal Horror. It sounds familiar, but the sprite... Did they just change the sprite on this thing? Okay, this guy's bad news. Or if, if this is the one I'm thinking of, at least. I mean, I've been forgetting to use my shields this whole time. Okay, this isn't the dude I'm thinking of. Oh! Uh! Wow, there are so many things that works on that I expect that it shouldn't work on. Uh, can we teleport away when we're... Oh shit, we can teleport away when we're snared. That is amazing. Oh, never mind. Oh, we don't have line of sight. Oh, a hire would be handy in this kind of situation. I guess we'll just wait for him to show up again. Oh, did he, did he die? Oh, I just killed him with that, uh, yeah. Banished into the void spell right there. Yeah, I swear, I don't recognize this abyssal horror. Uh-oh. Yeah, I guess this is a bit of a weakness of spellcasters, as you can't ri Whoa, they can move! Um, okay, we need... Actually, this this is what we do with, yeah, bullshit like that. There we go. Right, that's the whole reason why this spell is part of the, yeah, Time Mage's repertoire, is to be able to hit enemies outside your field of vision. Hi there, fishies. Okay, we aren't... Haven't seen any of the Searing Horrors just yet, which is... Really good. Those guys are super bad news. These guys, on the other hand, no shortage of them. Actually, you're actually pretty unlikely to drown on uh, this version of the Lake of Nur Floor 2, though. 
uh, because a lot of the as nasty as some of these uh, new enemies are uh, mo a lot of them will drop bubbles when you kill them which means you're actually in pretty substantially reduced danger of getting drowned oh no stuck in the darkness that is not a pleasant place to be stuck, believe me. You know what, I think this uh, wave spell... Oh! ...is my most damaging spell. I should probably be opening most encounters with this, actually. It has the longest cooldown, too, at three seconds. Man, Paradox Mage is so good. Can't even see him, but we'll just keep going until it says killed something. I'm healing from darkness damage somehow. I don't even know why that is. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's dead. Or maybe not. I mean, yeah, he can't be dead, because he just hit me with the snare there. Unless that was a trap. There are snaring traps in this area. Okay, I'm tempted to teleport around to the other side. Just so I can get the wave on them both, but I'm not going to. Yeah, I have not seen a single one of those uh, burning horrors. Now, the moment of truth is, are we going to be able to kill the uh, the boss of this area? I think we should be able to. Uh, just because, like, like I, I think I demonstrated it with the previous run, where your main barrier to being able to beat this guy is just... It's basically a DPS race. You need to kill him before you can heal himself and refresh all of his infusions. I'm pretty sure we got the deeps to be able to muster that, though. Nevertheless, there's no, no sense being careless. Do we have anything else that'll help us with this guy? Something I've been forgetting about? Oh, well, this is a sustain. I should uh, put that over with my sustains. Hmm, that spin thing could be alright. Okay, we'll start doing this. Uh, this thing, garbage. This thing, right, that's a sustain. So we'll put that up over here. What happened to my seal fate? There we go. Uh, so we're going to want this thing. Alright, we got to put points in this to get the range up. Oh, well. We'll stick this on him. Oh, he just took off my sustains, the bugger. Whoops, he was not even in range for that. Okay, yeah, we, we definitely had the damage output for that. Also, it looks like he dropped some kind of staff. Ah, it's a tier 2. Skin of many. It's light armor. Constitution? Okay, so this is like light armor for a melee class. We don't have the strength for it, though. Oh yeah, was I, gonna, was I gonna put points in strength? Or whatever, the skin of many isn't nearly as good as that uh, tier 4 armor, so we're gonna get rid of that. Did I, did I do this already? Was this this run or the previous run where we figured out this forbidden tome? The book is done already. Okay. Thank you for that. Oh, that was a wand, not a staff. Wait, no, we did get a staff. It was just, yeah, bad. Uh, there we go. Yeah, this we can get rid of now, too. This is crap. I think this might be crap now, too. All those immunities versus... Physical damage resist and... Some mediocre stats. Ah, 
crit reduction, infravision. Yeah, we'll keep it on hand. Yeah, I don't think we want to lose the armor there, so we'll get rid of those. Okay, so yeah, we've. Uh, I think this is only the second run. What? How many runs have I done now of uh, Tales of Majael? I did the four, uh, four drop fiesta runs. I did a Mulligan of the Alchemist, and I think that was it. So we've done five runs so far. Of those, I think only one of them has uh, has made it past the uh, Shirtul Fortress. So yeah, we are doing, or maybe two of them. I think one of them died shortly after. All right, this is your, basically your item chest. The communal chest, like the one from Diablo. Okay, and this is our monster butler. So yeah, he, he explains all the different things you can do with the fortress, but it costs you energy. And the way you get energy is by transmogrifying items. So throughout the course of the game, we'll be coming back here periodically to up unlock uh, new rooms in this area to do different things. None of them are super productive. Really, the only super good one is uh, the, the random dungeon generator. Okay, so yeah, that's the second of the uh, of the introductory dungeons here. Oh, what uh, what alchemists did I miss? We got the hermit. We got last hope. We need oh, we need the guy in dearth, and dearth is thunder fucked right now. Ah, uh, we can go fix that. You know what, actually, here's an idea. Tunit 29. We'll put this crappy shield to uh, auto-use just when enemies are visible. So now we have like one, uh, one long-range shield that we'll put on just for the hell of it. And then we'll have like the emergency, sh emergen emergency shield, which is when enemies, for when enemies are like right up in your grill. Oh, cool. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's bad news. I really hate this uh, hurricane status. It's like the worst thing in the world to get uh, ticked down by a status effect in this game. It's just like, okay, I'm going to die in three turns and there's nothing I can do about it. Even if you've killed the enemies, it's like, okay, I have no way to remove this bleeding or burning hex or whatever. I'm just gonna die. Oh, especially in Dreadfell. I've had several runs end that way, especially against the Master. Where it's like I kill him, and then he's got like a burning hex on me or whatever that just ticks down and kills me after I kill him. Hi, guys! That's where you all went. Oh, wow. Three for one. Good, good. Uh oh, can't get them both. Ah! There we go. Still more of them. Thought that would be. There we go. That's the last of them. So even though there's still like the darkness over the town, I think you can still use shops and stuff. So there's. Yeah, we can still do the alchemist thing. Fox is garbage. Actually, cunning's not bad, but uh... Ooh, physical crit and. Defense? Okay, I guess we do go for dexterity cunning after all. Uh, what do you know? We're kind of close on that one, too. I guess we're close on all of them. We've got two ingredients from each. This is better than what I've got. It's a tier one. We lose defense, we lose will. Resistances are kind of a wash. Ooh, the immunities, though. Yeah, we'll keep what we got. I really should, I, I've been thinking, I've been watching some other, I've actually been watching a lot of Twitch streams lately, uh, weirdly enough. Because, yeah, I, I work at, like, a local uh, retail outlet, or I guess, what, what do you call them? Yeah, just a, 
lo local business. Uh, so I've got a lot of spare time during the day when there's no customers around to just like browse YouTube and whatnot. Although I've actually, yeah, been watching a lot of Twitch streams at work lately. Including several Tales of Majayal ones. It seems that uh, insane roguelike appears to be the standard for uh, Twitch stream. I, I guess everyone who, like, it's it's kind of what you'd figure. Everyone, Almost everyone who streams this game is someone who streams, like, only this game all the time. So they're all, like, crazy, hardcore, insane roguelike players. Like, roguelike, like, roguelike difficulty in this game, I mean. And, uh... I mean, we need to go to the other elf village to get that guy's rune. That's actually the magic guy, so we might find something we like from him. Yeah, but yeah, I've been thinking maybe I should include, include like, I don't know, scrub tier tome in my uh, stream titles from now on. Forgot to do it today, but maybe in the future. Oh yeah, we probably want a new shielding rune to... Uh, Replace that shitty starting one by now. That one seems good. 200. That is just barely our new best shield. Oh, it's got the lowered reduction, but I think it's still worth it for the increased... Uh, yeah. Damage it'll shield. Okay, and then we do the same thing pretty much where... Or, yeah, this will be our long-range shield. Problem with the uh, auto-activate... Hey there, uh, Desergio. Good to see ya. Or Des Des Desedro. Zedro. Yeah, that was, that was what we had decided on. Uh, so I'm probably going to take the stats from this guy. Yeah, Mag Will. That's all right. J-Ro? Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. I will try to remember. Yeah, magic willpower is easily the way to go with that one. I'm actually kind of sad because this is probably going to be the last of the apple cider right here. Oh yeah, I remember I had the same problem where I did like... I've, I've done that with like every, you know, class unlock that requires a specific class where I, uh... I do a bunch of runs with that class going for the unlock and I fail over and over again. That was just pure luck that we happened to be playing Temporal Ward and it's like, oh yeah, there's an unlock, let's go for it. Or the worst one is I think the... I, don't, I, I think I might even have to cheat to get this one. Uh, the nastiest one I've seen is you need to be playing a Yeek... And you need to say you need to be playing a yeek and save the yeek that's in the old halfling ruins. Oh yeah, that's right. You can get there are some unlocks I don't that I don't think work on adventure, but there are some. Or actually, no, it's not adventure. That's right. You can get anything on. You can do any of the unlocks on adventure, but some of them you can't do on easy mode, which seems weird and backwards to me. But whatever. It was one or the other. It was either the easy mode difficulty doesn't get you achievements, which means no unlocks, or the adventure death setting, like the unlimited lives setting, uh, doesn't give you unlocks. I think that it does, though. Okay, I think we're, yeah, well over-leveled to deal with the slave compound now. Um, it's actually going to be tough to not kill these guys. Because, yeah, all of our damage is basically piercing. I guess I can go like this to, like, deftly avoid hitting the other guys. I guess, yeah, or I could just, like, yeah, pierce through them anyways. Oh, there's, oh, there's dudes here. Did not notice that there were dudes here. Oh, that's convenient. Okay, maybe we will be able to save these guys after all. Although maybe that's not what we want here. Yeah, let's just kill them. There we go. 
We even saved one of them. Nice. Oh, those spell crits feel so good. Guys, 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 get out of my way. I would like to breathe. What is this even? Breathe time on these guys. Wasn't that a thing? Wasn't there a class in this game that can breathe time? That was the among the dumbest things I think I've seen. Oh, um, I aggroed. Shit, I must have done. One of them must have been my buddy. I've accidentally aggroed all of my brawler buddies there. Well, okay, my other. My new brawler buddies can deal with that. Unless they can't. Okay, that works. And uh, these guys are getting to be a pain in the ass. Oh, they drop items, too. Or you know what? I think you aggro them uh, just by killing the others. Although, weirdly enough, I think I might still get the achievement here because I'm pretty sure you don't have to have them survive the whole floor to get the achievement. That was interesting. Um, I think you just have to rescue them once and then it doesn't matter what happens to them after that. That is a clone of me who appeared from a paradox effect. I have not seen that before. At least not on this run. Ouch. Okay, that fixed that. Hey there, buddies! Wow, I'm getting these, these paradox effects are pretty freaking sweet. Uh, okay, okay, that wasn't that one wasn't so sweet. I kind of wish that one had not happened just now. What's your deal, guys? I thought I rescued you. Oh no, I didn't actually get him. Wow, I've still got a failure chance on these. Oh, you know what it is? I've got too many sustains. That's why my sustain keeps deactivating. And uh, that's why I keep getting these crazy paradox effects. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to kill that guy and then these guys are going to aggro. Okay, cool. We're safe again. Now, uh, but that means this is the first time I've had to mess with this. Uh, we need to... That's the wrong one. Never mind. Uh, we need to adjust our paradox level. We need to go way down. Go to like 250. Because, yeah, your sustains increase your sort of resting paradox level. What just happened here? Oh, this doesn't actually work the way I thought it did. Okay, what was the sustain that I wanted then? It was this one. Okay, so this is just some weird thing then. Activate to seal fate for four turns. Yeah, for some reason I thought that was a sustain. I think this track might right here might be one of my favorite uh, OC remix jazz tunes I think I've heard. Or you know what? I think we do have a way to uh, deal with these guys. It's a bit risky. We'll go, put one there. Put one here. Go in the portal, and then yeah, we can teleport right next to him and fuck his shit up. There, and that's his buddies rescued, or my buddies rescued. Cool. Actually, if I just banish the Yeek without killing it, I think this is one of my former allies. Oh, wow, looks like we got a raid. Hey, Doobie Doo, it's been a while since we've uh, yeah seen you here. Thank you for the raid with your party of seven. 
I've got a f I've never seen this before. If a raid is offensive, moderate in chat settings. Um, okay, I'm I'm pretty sure you guys won't offend me too too badly. I don't. Thank you for thank you for the heads up, Twitch. But I don't think I'll be needing that feature. Super Dooby Doo. That question offends me deeply. Maybe I needed to listen to Twitch after all. <laughs> um, I'm actually I'm actually doing quite well. Thank you for asking. How about you? Just finished a stream, I presume. Oh man, I, I hate how this works so much. It's like you rescue all your dudes, then accidentally aggro a few of them, and if I kill that aggroed guy, all of the others are going to turn on me. Oh yeah, Silent Hill 4. I uh, played, that was one of the, I actually played that game back in the day. I didn't play much of it. I never got into Silent Hill super deeply or anything, but uh, yeah. Oh, wait, we're still auto-exploring. Oh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm sick of this fucking guy. There we go. Fuck you. There. There. That's what you get for avenging your comrades. Okay, I am a bit dismayed at the lack of damage we're putting out right now. Okay, we'll sit here, wait for him to get un devoured by time and space. Okay, whatever. Okay, cool. Floor two. Uh, this is all garbage. But yeah, I've kind of been taking a break from the retro stuff lately myself and been playing more modern games. He says playing <laughs> this game that looks like it. Actually, technically, I guess Tales of Majayal isn't that modern. It's based on, like, an old uh, roguelike from, like, one of the primordial roguelikes. Like, uh, this was originally a spin-off from uh, Angband, which is, yeah, one of the very first roguelikes that was, like, around at the same time as NetHack 1.0. But it's, it's actually been in continuous development since then, so it's actually, like, even though it's been, it's that old, it's still like a modern game today, just because they've been updating it tons over the years. Uh, is this guy, is this an aggroed dude? I think that's just someone else's slave. Oh, that sounds like a follow there. Thank you for the follow. Um, I don't know if this is unusual, but I've kind of gotten the habit of saving the thanks for the follows and that whatnot uh, till after. The stream so i will i will thank you generically now and then thank you individually after the stream just because i found it just got disruptive of the streams just interrupting gameplay okay we just uh did something there ah whatever just took out some walls who needs walls walls are bullshit um okay this anomaly shit is bad news oh wow Okay, with a 5% chance to fail, uh, we are failing all of our freaking temporal magic spells right now. This is awful. Um, okay, we got a healing spell. That'll do that. Uh, we... Okay, good. I was lucky that that worked out for us. Kill that guy. Hey, there we go. Oh, wow, this is like a thing that got stuck on us. This is the worst... Uh... Paradox effect I think I've ever seen. Man, we're playing like a semi... Not exactly an advanced class, but... There's a bit more to this. This is like a spellcaster class who uses a weird resource type. Instead of casting spells with mana, he casts them with time paradoxes. So it's kind of difficult to explain. It's, it looks like random chaos is uh, what's going on on screen a lot of the time, and that's kind of what the Time Mage classes are about. Basically, the Time Mage is like a mage who doesn't need resources to cast his spells in this game. Instead, he has Paradox. Every time you cast a Time spell, you'll increase your Paradox level, and once it gets above a certain threshold, uh, there's a chance that your spell will fail. And if it does, then it'll activate a Paradox effect, which is just some, like, random, ridiculous thing it it yeah basically has a chance to cancel your spell and do some random ridiculous thing instead. 
So when you're seeing like random dudes spawn in, terrain appearing around me, me teleporting around randomly, those are all paradox effects is uh, what's going on with that. You know what? I know I say we sh you should never waste your blinks, but I'm going to waste my blink. Just because I didn't like those guys body blocking for him there. I think we're going to do it again here, actually. Oh, we got to get the range on that teleport up. Oh, eight spaces? Yeah, we got to get that number up. Nice. Okay, whatever. We're just, yeah. I guess, I guess maybe I was wrong about that achievement. It looks like we do, actually. Because I should have it by now with all the dudes I've rescued. So I'm pretty sure we actually did need to make sure those guys don't die. Yeah, as far as I can tell, the way it works is that... Uh, yeah, your buddies will aggro if they see you kill another released slave but only if they see you do it. So you can end up in weird situations where you have like some of your slave allies aggroed on you and others not aggroed. So it's like, shit, if I want to kill the, and if I want to kill the aggro guy, then yeah, sure enough, these guys are going to aggro now. Thankfully, yeah, slaves are kind of worthless, but you get an achievement for rescuing enough of them without killing them. This is like going to be the first run in a long time where I haven't uh, gotten that achievement. I guess they drop items, so it's kind of worth it. Uh, this is... Ooh, that's a big regeneration infusion, and it scales with magic. We'll keep that for now. That might be our fifth infusion. And yeah, infusions are a pretty simple thing. Basically, they're very similar to the potions in Diablo 3. It's, you can think of it as sort of just like a potion... That where instead of having a limited supply of them, it just has a cooldown. Just like the potions in Diablo 3. It's another tier 2. Don't care about that. Ooh, that's a wand. I don't actually know what these wards do. And I'm too afraid to experiment with stuff when a run's going this well. Okay, we're gonna mess with this guy. You can do a minigame with him to unlock the Brawler class, but I've already got Brawlers unlocked, so... We're just gonna fuck his shit up. Yeah, Paradox Mage is pretty crazy damage output. That was, that was a boss right there, is what you just saw. That was a boss fight. Okay, we're at level 20, which means we get our second inscription. I've already... So we, it's, we've got a category point now, which means we actually have the option of either, either unlocking a new talent tree, getting access to new abilities, or we can take an inscription, which gets us basically another, another inscription slot. Which will let us make use of that regeneration room that we just picked up. On the other hand, we've already... Actually, no, that's right. We were going to take a talent, weren't we? New talent tree. Because, yeah, we're kind of running out of the super useful talents that we want to max out. Like, there's this one. And then at some point, we'll max out this uh, dust to dust. But other than that, I think we decided stasis was maybe the best one. Actually, with the way that we're Paradox is going crazy on us lately, maybe we do want this. So this tree is basically... Uh, based around managing your paradox and preventing those paradox effects from happening and also uh, harnessing them to your benefit that's a stun right there stuns are amazing time shields shields are amazing i think we just take uh stasis i don't know it's a tough call yeah we're gonna do it i'm gonna unlock stasis with my uh, new category point. This is a passive, so we might as well take it. We're having problems with Paradox right now, so I'll just take that and then take this one as well to keep getting our stun resistance up. Yeah, as I kind of mentioned, stun is a really, really nasty status effect in this game. It doesn't completely prevent you from doing anything, but it makes you pretty useless. 
Basically, it reduces your movement speed by 50% and all of your damage by 50% and uh, prevents your talents from coming off cooldown. Which is horrible. Yeah, pretty much all, everything you do in this game. You are your talents in this game. This game is all about tactical use of your various talents and not being able to use them is the worst. Okay, so we lose light and dark resist. We lose blindness immunity, but gain confusion immunity. Mana per turn we don't care about. Uh, the game is beatable. Uh, there's actually kind of a storyline in the game. I'm just skipping past the text because I don't care about the storyline because I've played this game for like 400 hours. But yeah, there is a campaign that you go through with, you know, full like story quests, side quests. Yeah, it's a whole thing. It's not linear or anything like most roguelikes. Like, you know, most roguelikes you go one dungeon level to the next to the next, you know. You know how it is. Net hack in those types of games. In this game, you've got a big overworld with a bunch of different dungeons. So you kind of choo get to choose what order you do things in. And there's a lot of optional side dungeons and that kind of thing too. It's really almost more like a traditional RPG. Or actually, the way I like to think of it is really like just a roguelike version of like a Diablo game. That's really what it is. I think I'm going to take this. Yeah, I, I love uh, Tales of Majael. It is my favorite of the uh, traditional roguelikes out there. I started playing it about two years ago. Two or three years, or probably, yeah, probably about two years now. My favorite roguelike before that was Crawl, uh, Dungeon Crawl, Stone, Stone Soup. But I think Tales has surpassed it. There's just so much cool stuff. I love the tactical combat in this game and the fact that you have, like, yeah, two full rows of skills stretching across the bottom of the screen. And so many... There's just the whole t uh, skill point uh, allocation system was my favorite thing from the Diablo games. And just the fact that you can, like... You have all these different classes and all of these different ways to build each class. You can play a Paradox Mage. Like, five, you can do five consecutive Paradox Mage runs and build your character differently and have the game be different every time just with that one class and there's like 30 classes in this game it is ridiculous the amount of uh replayability that you get here and mind you that's true of pretty much all of your traditional roguelikes you can play net hack forever and it never gets bored it never gets boring but yeah right now so in terms of progression though what i'm doing right now is I'm basically just going through and doing all of the side quests that I can, that I'm strong enough to do right now because the next story dungeon is a freaking pain in the ass and I want to be as strong as I can be before we get in there. Although frankly, I'm not, I'm probably not even strong enough to beat the boss of this uh, area reliably, so maybe we do go. Uh, maybe we brave the sandworm right now just for the hell of it. I think we're gonna do it. Yeah, I think we're gonna go to the Sandworm Lair. So there's a couple couple nasty story dungeons in this game that are they're they're not entirely based around like the strength of your character or how well you do battles or anything like that. Like just leveling up isn't enough to get you through these uh, story dun these per these two particular story dungeons that kind of come one after another. The last one we did was the Lake of Nar, which is all underwater, so you need to avoid drowning. And this is the Sandworm Lair, uh, where instead of a traditional dungeon, oh boy, where you've got, uh, you know, just go through tunnels and stuff. In this dungeon, um, the rooms are not actually connected to each other by default. Instead, you need to follow these uh, little sandworms and they will basically make tunnels from one room to from room to room. There's no way to aggro these guys. They are basically invincible and immune to all damage and will never ever attack you under any circumstance. So you don't have to worry about that. What you do have to worry about is that the tunnels that these guys make uh, don't last forever. They will, as you can see, slowly collapse behind, collapse behind them after a certain number of turns. And if the tunnel collapses on top of you, uh, you start to suffocate and you basically slowly run out of air over the course of like the next two or three turns 
And then over the course of the two or three turns after that, uh, you start losing hit points and die. So basically I have like five or six turns after the tunnel collapses on you. Oh, thanks again for the follow. Again, I will individually thank you after the stream. But uh, yeah, so what basically, basically you have five turns until you die after the tunnel collapses on you. And when the tunnel collapses on you, uh, you can't move or anything. So basically, unless you have wall walking or some form of teleportation, uh, you're basically guaranteed to die after the tunnel get, uh, collapses on top of you. Now basically all that means is all you have to do is you have to not stop in the tunnel and you're fine. What can happen sometimes though is that enemies will stack up in the tunnel. They'll like uh, chase after you and start to stack up in the tunnel. And then so you could end up in like a fight with an enemy in a tunnel. And it's like, come on, get out of my way. I need to get through so it doesn't collapse on me. So in that way, it kind of is based on levels here. You want to, you don't want to take the sandworm lair unless you're strong enough. Oh boy. He just went invisible there is what just happened. And I just got blind. So that kind of, kind of a double whammy there. There are like two ways that I can't see him right now. Okay, thankfully the duplicate worms that those guys spawn are not... They don't share the properties. And actually, yeah, just like Diablo, uh, the way rare monsters work in this game is pretty much the same as in Diablo. Uh, certain... Occasionally you'll come across rare enemies that are basically regular enemies with buffed up stats and a big stack of like nasty modifiers on them. Again, almost exactly the same way that the rare and champion mobs work in Diablo. But yeah, basically you want to come in here with uh, making making sure that you have a lot of killing power to get the enemies out of your way so that you don't end up stuck in the tunnel. And then some enemies in these areas can also... That's a pretty good helmet. We lose physical resistance. That's the thing. we got so much physical resistance right now, which is really great. But we're seeing all these other things too. Sw swap will for Sturdex Cunning. Actually, you know what? That armor might just make up for the physical resists. I think maybe we take it. I think we just take it. So one other nasty thing in this dungeon is, uh, yeah, some enemies can... Not, not just the... So yeah, the sandworms aren't the only thing that can dig tunnels here. Some enemies, like these guys right here, yeah, the gigantic sandworm tunnelers can ignore walls and just tunnel straight at you. So you can end up in situations where you're like surrounded by sandworm tunnelers in the t in the tunnel. And it's like, shit, I'm surrounded. The tunnel's gonna collapse on me. And then not only has the tunnel collapsed on you, but you're getting nommed on by sandworms who are surrounding you. So yeah, this is a uh, sandworm lair is a fucking bastard of a son of a bitch of a dungeon. So I usually like to buff up a bunch before coming here. Thankfully, as a Paradox Mage, we actually do have an, an innate teleport, so it's not all over for us if we do get collapsed on. Well, frankly, so yeah, this is actually the very first... I only recently unlocked this class, so this is my very first uh, Paradox Mage, actually. So I don't, I'm not really a super expert on the class or anything, but what I've, from what I've seen so far, they seem crazy strong. This is like some of the best DPS I've... Or DPS doesn't really make sense. Say, damage, referring damage in terms of seconds obviously makes no sense in a turn-based game. But you know what I mean. Damage per turn. Just the straight-out damage output of the Paradox Mage seems kind of insane from what I've seen so far. This is, yeah, one of the strongest offensive classes... I think I've ever played. And yeah, because of the whole paradox thing, they don't actually have like the the problems of running out of mana that most spellcasters do. Like I had that spell blade or that arcane blade I was playing a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that guy just like did not have enough mana to do anything. He had like all these great skills and you could cast like two of them before you run out of mana. Nice, two for one. Oh, there's the exit. And yeah, similar to the Lake of Gnar, the Sandworm Lair is another one of those dungeons that I almost never want to do a full clear of. 
I'll pretty much go just to avoid sticking around and increasing the chance of getting tunnel collapsed. I'll uh, pretty much go down the exit as soon as I see it. Okay, so we lose temporal darkness resist. That's kind of all right. Gain a bunch of other good resists. Healing mods, not amazing. Losing the teleport effects isn't great. Oh yeah, we have an active ability on this cape too, don't we? Yeah, that's a pretty good, pretty good ability right there. What else do we get from this? Physical power, armor, strength, constitution. Yeah, I'm gonna keep my current cape. It's tier two staff. I think there's four levels in the sandworm tunnel. It's an important thing to remember because the the boss of the sandworm tunnel will basically just aggro on you as soon as you enter the floor. So yeah, once you get to the boss floor, you pretty much want, want to just stand perfectly still so that you don't end up like surrounded by enemies. Ooh, the digestive sack. Again, this is one of the new types of chests from the new expansion. Has a chance to spawn a very, very deadly enemy if you open it. Again, though, I almost never turn down the chance to do something stupid in this game. And what do we got? Well, level 20 Sandworm Unique. That's not awful. He appears to be... Oh, he's a Pistoler. He is a Pistoler. So, I'm going to shield up. Okay, that's half my shield. Okay, he seems to have a lot of resistance. Okay, that was actually not too bad. Right, and of course we get a bunch of pistol stuff for killing that guy. Oh, this is interesting. So yeah, this is an artifact right here, basically the... Or actually, no, it's a random unique. That's actually even better than an artifact. And again, yeah, item tiers in this game. Basically exactly the same as Diablo. You got your green magic items. Your, uh, your orange are basically... Or no, your reddish, pinkish ones here are basically rares. Then you got your uniques, which are called artifacts in this game. And then you got your random uniques, which are basically the best thing you can get in general, you know, assuming that they're suitable for your class and all. As far as I know, this game doesn't have smart loot like the uh, like Diablo 3 does. End up with a lot of crap that your character can't use in this game, which is fine because enemies just drop so much stuff that you're going to find something for yourself eventually. Okay, so I'm pretty sure this isn't the boss floor right now. Oh, one of our sustains uh, just deactivated. Whoa! No boss, but there's lots of other bullshit that's just popping up on us out of nowhere. Uh, so what happened to this thing? Oh, right, that's our invisibility thing. So whenever you see the screen go dark like that, uh, my character has an ability where basically if I take a single hit that remove basically anytime I take a really big hit that takes away like 30% of my life, um, it'll, it'll activate a passive ability that immediately turns me invisible. Oh, hey. Hey, this looks like a fun little room. It's got three chests and the exit and everything. Oh, that looks like bad news. This guy, oh fuck, I knew he, I knew he looked like bad news. Okay, so yeah. Basically, the way rare rare enemies work in this game is uh, they essentially have, like, character class talents. It's like, in addition to the regular talents that the enemy has, like the regular sandworm talents that this guy can have, uh, he has a random assortment of talents from, like, the, the player talent trees. So this guy is, I forget what they call him, but he's basically a buzzsaw specialist, which is like the worst possible thing you can encounter. They are super defensive, super damaged, just crazy amounts of everything. They even have good healing if they uh, get the right set of infusions. Yeah, bad, bad news, those guys. 
That one didn't spawn an enemy. This one. This guy seems to be a bulwark, which is a sword and shield type class. It was supposed to be super defensive, but that one was super weak. Which makes sense, because that was a super weak enemy to begin with. In general, the weak enemies make for weak rares. So yeah, if you encounter like a worm or something that's a rare monster, generally still not going to be too much of a problem. Okay, so this is, yeah, darkness penetration. Yeah, this is just useless. All stuff that our class cares nothing about. Yep, this is all crap. Oh yeah, so uh, one other thing. Well, one a nice feature actually that I wish that Diablo games had. This is the boss floor, so I'm just gonna sit here and wait for the boss to charge at me. You are not the boss. Okay. I'm gonna chew up some sandworms first. But uh, yeah, basically this game has uh, what's called the Chest of Transmogrification, which basically makes it so that you have unlimited inventory space. Now, if you want to take something out of your Chest of Transmogrification and use it, like if I want to be able to use this Tempest Bringer Mace, first I've got to take it out, and now it's in my inventory, taking up your encumbrance, and now I can use it. Uh, the Chest of Transmogrification also lets you sell stuff on the fly, though, so it's it effectively just lets you instantly sell anything you don't want, which is great. And I wish every single Diablo game had that feature. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's floor five. See, yeah, if the boss is here, it should just, like, charge right towards you first thing when you get on the floor. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is like a dream, whatchamacallum? Yeah. I forget what it's called, the Solipsist class, I think it is. Uh, so we're gonna bump these guys away. Actually, th this is what this thing is for, so I'm gonna banish you into time and space. And that apparently killed the other guy somehow. Cool. I don't even know how that worked. But yeah, he died for some reason, and that's reason enough for me. Must have some kind of passive that, uh, like, kills. Actually, you know what? That's an AoE ability. That's right. It damages adjacent enemies. I keep forgetting that. Or hell, I didn't even know that until, like, halfway through the previous stream. Which was a week ago. So, uh, yeah. Would explain why I forgot that. Yeah, I think we got one more, one more floor to go. Hmm. Oh, never mind. Nope, spoke too soon. There he is. There he is. Oh, I'm still blind. Okay. You guys are all nice and grouped up, so that's gonna be a nice little... Oh, and now they're lined up? Yeah, this is shit. This is shit. I'm slow and I'm blind and my reality is smeared. Whatever, we're just gonna cast shit blind right here and hope that we get them. Oh, nice. That did it. Oh, and we gotta level up. Yeah, so that's what uh, leveled us up there. Uh, so we're... Oh, yeah, so the boss didn't even get in close on us. Okay, so we gotta level up. More talents to assign. Uh... Okay, can increase... This will lower the cooldown of this ability. Don't think I care about that too much. This stuff just seems annoying to use, so I don't think we're going to do these. I remember when... Oh yeah, we wanted uh, more teleport range. I'll keep that in mind. Eh, not bad. That's gonna be a lot of damage displacement. Maybe we start maxing that. 
Yeah, I think we're going to do it. Yeah, that seems like a good skill. Okay, now... Okay, now with this, we're finished maxing out our stun resist with this thing. Yeah, this is just a... This is an incredible uh, defensive sustain right here. Oh yeah, sustains are basically like auras in... Uh, not in Diablo, in the other, other Diablo-esque game. Path of Exile, where it basically just basically just lowers your maximum MP by the cost of the sustain. Or in this case, it just raises your Paradox level by a fixed amount forever. 27 armor, 57% stun and cut resist. Scales with magic. And we're pumping everything into magic, so yeah. We're basically just invincible. We do tons of damage and we're invincible. Sounds like a winning strategy to me. Although hubris is kind of a losing strategy, so I suppose those two things sort of balance out. Ooh, blind and stun immunity. This is decent stuff. I like my blink cape. I really like my blink cape, so we're gonna keep it. Stamina per turn, that's garbage. Life regen is garbage. All of that is garbage. Oh yeah, and we've got a teleportation staff that lets us exit out of uh, dungeons as well. Now, mind you, um, it's not like an instant town portal scroll, like in Diablo. Uh, your, your exit spell basically has uh, uh, 40 turns bef between when you activate it and when it takes effect. So if you decide, oh, I want to teleport out of the dungeon, you've got to survive for 40 turns. Uh, before that happens, so you can't... It's not a get-out-of-jail-free card. That can happen sometimes, where it's like with your foresight, you decide, you know what, I'm probably going to lose this battle in around about 40 turns from now, so I'm going to cast that to get out of here, but yeah. Uh, so our next... Our next story quest, so our, our story quest right now, it doesn't actually tell you which quests are, like, plot required and which are side quests. I guess technically none of these are required. We could just go straight to Dreadfell right now if we, if I th if we want to. Which we don't, because Dreadfell is horrible. Ah, dang it. You get these patrols on the world map sometimes if you run into them. They'll fight you. They're just basically just random player characters. Like, they have all the abilities and stats and everything of a player character. It's just like a random race, a bunch of random race, random class combinations with random equipment, which uh, can randomly be very, very bad for you. I've lost several characters to just carelessly running into a patrol and finding a dude and just getting a random dude who was way too strong. Also, they don't give you much experience, so you can't really farm up on them. Although, well, they do drop uh, very good equipment sometimes. Hi there. Oh, that is a paladin. A paladin skeleton! Seriously? Is that what we're seeing here? Yep, this is a skeleton paladin. That... Is technically not legal, I don't think. I don't think you're allowed to make a Skeleton Paladin in this game. Skeleton is actually one of the races in this game, and Paladin is one of the classes, but... You are not allowed to make a Skeleton Paladin. That is apparently a luxury only afforded to enemies. But yeah, you get fun sort of weird combinations like that sometimes. Like, you can get a fish... Or, yeah, you can get weird stuff where it's like, uh... We, we saw that earlier. It was... What was it? It was like a swarm of bugs dual-wielding pistols. That kind of stupid nonsense. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting that you can cast that on yourself. So, yeah, in addition to being cast as a laser, this number three spell, the Skull Laser, can be cast on yourself to make a little pool of damaging energy around you. Oh, my God. 
You know what, I was kind of uh, poo-pooing the uh, physical damage up earlier, but now that I think of it, that uh, big wave attack that I do is actually physical damage. Ooh, this guy seems tough. Oh, this is... What is this? He's Wraith form. I think this is a Doombringer. Yeah, I think this is a Doombringer. That doesn't really synergize very well with a uh, Skeleton Archer, though. Skeleton archers are a ranged class, and Doombringers are melee. Oh yeah, I guess for anyone, most modern roguelikes have this feature, but if it's not, I, this probably should have been the first thing I explained, and the fact that I didn't explain it probably caused a lot of people to tune out when they just like saw the stream and it's like, what is this crazy nonsense? Uh, so the reason I'm zipping around all over the place is because uh, of the auto explore function. It's kind of a standard feature in a lot of modern roguelikes. Uh, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, for example, has the same thing. Where yeah, basically you just hit the auto explore button and it'll uh, automatically explore the dungeon for you. Imagine that. And then yeah, obviously it'll, it'll stop once you come to an enemy or something of interest. I should probably... I should, I should go back to Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup sometimes. It's, it, it's been a long, long time since I've played it. I'm sure there's been many updates since the last time I was... I, I played uh, Dungeon Crawl back in college, so that would have been like six or seven years ago. Oh boy. Hey, yo. Oh yeah, so this halfling complex. So yeah, I was ba I was I sort of backed off in fear from this place earlier on. Obviously, we're super overpowered for the types of enemies that are in here right now. The reason I backed off is because the boss of this area is much much stronger than the enemies. And also, he comes with kind of a built-in escort side quest. That means you want to be, like, way, way stronger than him to be able to kill him before he kills your NPC, buddy. Okay, what are my... Okay, so yeah, Temporal Bolt is probably our most damaging spell right now. I should lead off with that pretty much every time. Oh, hey, this is a rare dude. And he's a fellow magic user. Um, yeah. Okay, that's a lot of bad status effects. Okay, we're gonna get out of here and heal a little bit. A very, very little bit. Fuck. Oof. Actually, that's fine. Summoning minions is like the least bad thing he can do. Oh, I thought I killed him. There we go. Heavy armor. What the hell is a freaking mage? ghoul doing carrying around heavy armor. I guess there's actually no reason at all why mages can't equip heavy armor in this game. 
I mean, they don't start with the ability innately, but you can train it in town for like 50 gold. Man, I, got, I gotta find that asshole, whoever trained that guy in heavy armor. Uh, this looks... Oh, uh, of course, yeah, another buzzsaw asshole. Oh yeah, you can see the enemy's equipment just with the, the little compressed uh, enemy readout here. Uh, so we're we gonna keep him back there if we can. Okay, he just just likes that spot a lot. Just does not want to move from it. Okay. Someday we're gonna find something to replace this silk current. This is like, like all of the mages we've ever had, have just kept the silk current, the the this uh, this unique piece of armor that I've got right here called the silk current. Yeah, I think both of my last two alchemists died with this uh, with this armor on. It's unlucky, obviously, but it's so strong, even for a tier two. Oh, hey, this guy. We're going to get to go to the frickin', uh... Yeah, the frickin' ogre cave, or the... What do you call it? The lab. Yeah, the ogre lab. Yeah, this is an optional... So yeah, this is an enemy that has, like, a... A random chance to spawn in this dungeon. And if you see him, it makes another side dungeon appear on the world map. I think the best character- I think our best run so far actually died in that dungeon. Right, yeah, that was the alchemist that we lost in, uh, to the frickin' explosion trap, because I didn't realize that things stack- could stack like six times. I had stuff that I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, so I have I have kind of a backup plan. I don't know if I'll need it for the, for the stream tonight because I've been playing a lot of Tales of Majeal lately. Or I guess that's not true. I haven't really been playing much of anything lately because I've been working all week and not streaming. But before that, I I've, I've been playing this game a lot. And like I don't know if I want to become like a dedicated Tales of Majeal streamer or anything, even though. People seem to have been enjoying that quite a bit now that I've been doing it. Like, there's, it's just there's other games I want to play, you know? So I was thinking that if this run ends up ending prematurely, um, I've got a particular recent release that I'm really interested in streaming. It's actually another game that I played, because yeah, I said I have been playing a little bit of video games over the course of the week, whenever I've found the time. And one of those was, yeah, a recent release, a recent piece of DLC, actually, for a game that I really, really like. That, uh, yeah, anyone who follows the stream can probably very easily guess what I'm talking about. So yeah, if I die relatively quickly in this run here, uh, yeah, the rest of the stream will be me checking out more of that particular piece of DLC. Yep, that's all crap. I guess four floors seems to be the regular number for uh, dungeons in this game. Oh, hello. That is a line of enemies. Oh, but they're lined up the wrong way. Okay, whatever. We can just wait a turn. There we go. 
uh, the enemy readout is blocking it a bit, but I believe this will hit all three of them. There's one down, two down, three down. The range on these spells is insane. That's pretty typical, actually, for spellcasters in this game, but it still surprises me every time. Oh, ah, uh, shit. Yeah. What is this? I forget what the class is called, but yeah, this is like basically like a... He spawns nightmares on you. It's like this cthulhu thing that spawns eldritch abominations next to you over and over again. Uh, it's, yeah, really nasty. I am gonna regret this, but here we go. No, oh, that wasn't too bad. Okay, aren't I supposed to be invisible? This guy must have, like, invisibility seeing or something. Did we kill that guy? Yeah, it looks like we did. Man, it's high damage variance, it looks like, on, uh... Where am I? Why am I still on cooldown? Ah, fuck it. I wonder if auto if auto explore just automatically sets it up so that you'll explore the boss chamber last. Because yeah, that seems to be at the rate we're going. This is the last thing we do on this floor will be going on the boss. Here he is. Okay, so yeah, subject Z. He's fighting the Yeek Wayest, and if we manage to kill him before he kills the Yeek Wayest, uh, we get a special bonus. And if you haven't unlocked the Yeek race, uh, this is the way you do it, is by saving this guy. Subject Z is really strong, as you can see, level 27. Uh, this guy right here, despite being level 25, is really weak. He's got 400 HP. Yeeks are very weak in general. So we need some way to lock this guy down, but I don't think we actually have any stuns or anything. So I think what we do... I don't know what we do. Okay. Shields up, and I'm probably going to regret this, but I really want that bonus, so I'm going to teleport between him and the Yeek and knock him back. He seems to be immune to knockback. What? No, people can say gay in chat. See, look, look at this. There, are you going to ban me now? No, I don't consider. This is... I, I don't... I know a lot of people have that, oh, this is, uh, you know... Gay, LGBT, IQ, GT plus friendly, and I do consider myself friendly to you know all of those groups and whatnot. I'm friendly to everyone who comes in, but I'm I'm a free speech absolutist. People can type whatever. People people can be dis as dis or I don't want to put it that way. I, I want people to feel comfortable in my chat here, to you know, in as much as you know they're comfortable with me and uh, the stream the con the streams that I do and stuff. But I don't want chat to be antagonizing each other. So the policy is you can be as disrespectable and awful as you want in chat to me, but not to your fellow chatters. Because I don't want to, I don't want people like driving other people off and that kind of shit. Um, something is spreading darkness here. Uh, that is not good. Okay, there, now he got knocked back. What is casting that darkness shit right here? But yeah, it's, it's not that I'm not, like, LGD, LGBTQ plus friendly or anything. It's just that generally when I see that type of thing in a list of stream rules, that's, like, kind of, like, code for, like, don't use any mean words or slurs or anything. Whereas I'm actually mostly fine with that kind of stuff within reason. At least to the extent that it's allowed by Twitch. The N-word is kind of, uh borderline case 
just because I think it's actually against the Twitch terms of service to use the N-word and some of the other like really nasty slurs that are out there. I don't know. We play it by ear. I have not had like a problem with people acting up in chat before, so I don't have any rules along that time, along those lines regarding conduct just yet. So just typing gay in chat is well within the acceptable limits as far as I'm concerned. Oh, hey, my uh, teleporty thing got taken off cooldown. Oh, and this... No, that's not a cooldown. Or that's not a... It's not a... What's the word? That's not a sustain. That A equals skill. Night Song. That is a rogue. Rogue unique ring. Um, now I forget what I was doing. I was just checking something on the on my internet browser just there, and now I can't remember what I was doing. Eh, there's nothing good in here. Okay, so I think that was kind of the last of our... Actually, that's not true. Uh, so yeah, basically there's like one or two more side dungeons we can do before the last... Uh, Last story quest. But I think we just go for it. Or not the last story quest, but the last one in this line. We're actually, like, not very far in the game at all. We're, like, maybe... Like a third of the way through the game right now. Actually, do we... Oh, man, we're still one short on each of the alchemist potions. Dang. Okay, this... This place right here. Oh, hey. Okay, so we got an escort. I think this is our first one tonight. Just randomly sometimes uh, you'll come across uh, this escort subquest on certain maps. There's basically no downside to doing them, so you might as well accept them all the time. And if you, if you manage to get them to their portal, they'll give you a skill. And sometimes those skills can be very, very good. Oh, hey, uh, this, these guys had a leader. He appears to be some kind of melee class because he's not, oh boy, and he rushed in. Uh, what kind of melee class is he? He appears to be like a rogue. Oh no, this is a shadow blade. Shit. Um, yeah, shadow blades can do a lot of damage. They can like one shot you. I think I almost got him though. I put a lot of yeah, I put a lot of magic on him before he rushed in there. That is a lot of dudes. Thankfully we got this tight little corridor to kind of seal things off for that. Oh that's right, we got that fang that gives us uh canine uh yeah the ability to sense canines. Uh, I forgot about this level up. Uh, this displacement thing seems really good, even though I keep forgetting to use it. We need to put that ability on a... Okay, control 5, that's not... You know what? Yeah, that's good enough. Oh, you know what? Actually, uh, let's create a parallel box. I've moved to another time thread! Oh boy. Oh, is that a boulder thrower? Okay, yeah, that's a boulder thrower right in front. That guy is like the main reason why this uh, why this dungeon here is a pain in the ass. So we want to kill him. Okay, good, we killed him. Yeah, I think we just want to keep blasting lasers at these guys, actually. Again, going with those glide strats, where we just kill them, or no, just shoot them. That was the line. Oh, Paradox is coming up. Uh, let's, 
Unwind. Okay, I'm kind of remembering how to play this class now. Oh right, I forgot that we actually have an escort here. I was just gonna like run back and hide to regenerate some HP, but I forgot that we can't uh, get behind our escort. Oh! Man, this is a crazy amount of dudes. Wow, this is a lot of anomalies. Oh god, I just got teleported into a wall. I'm not suffocating though, so I seem to have created like a little alcove for myself. Can I teleport? Uh, I can't teleport because I can't see. Okay, we need a blink cape. Shit. Oh man, this sucks. Okay, so that's the escort quest failed because a freaking paradox sprung up mountains all around me. And now I'm kind of fucked. Um, I mean, we paradoxed our way into this, and we can paradox our way out. Okay, I want more teleport levels for sure. What did we decide we were going to do? We're going we're gonna to do more of the stasis. Ooh, shields. Shields are really good. Uh, so yeah, basically we, we can use this ability right here, Induce Anomaly. It's basically the equivalent of like a recover MP spell. It lowers your paradox level, but also causes a paradox effect to occur. So paradox effect is what ended up getting us stuck in this mountain. So. Um, yeah, eventually we just keep triggering paradox effects until we find one that gets us out of here. Actually, you know what we could do, which is probably the smart thing. There we go. <laughs> Cleared it out. Man, there's still more dudes. Okay, that was pretty ridiculous. It sucks that we lost our... It was a temporal mage, too. We would have gotten a great skill off of that uh, stupid escort. Oh, that really sucks. This is the first time, I think, that I've ever been like really seriously hurt by uh, this whole paradox effect thing. Up until now, yeah, it really hasn't mattered at all whenever the paradoxes have triggered. But that one's permanently screwed us out of a free skill. Oh, it's a tentacle floor. I'll do one. You can waste a lot of time with these. The tentacle floors tend to spawn a lot of tentacles. This is just another just random stupid thing you can poke. Of course, of course, we get the one that drags you down. Okay, we're going to save the AoE. Fuck. Okay. Okay. Oh boy. So yeah, basically you, you can choose to interact with the tentacles if you want. And if you do, one of a few different things can happen. One of which being you get dragged down into freaking Dante's fifth circle of hell here. And you gotta fight your way out. And every so often, the whatever it was, gastric whatever, will assault you and you take a bunch of damage. So you don't want to stay down here for too long. This is pretty much the worst possible thing that can happen to you if you choose to interact with a tentacle. I mean, there's almost nothing good that can happen if you choose to poke the tentacles. It's either either a super spawn, tent super strong tentacle monster will spawn, or you get dragged down, or nothing happens. But, you know, the rare monster spawn can drop, uh, will give you experience and an item and everything. Man, this is a lot of enemies. 
I've actually got a lot of shields right now, though, so we're maybe fine. That guy right there is a pain in the ass, but other than that, we're actually doing pretty good here. Put up the shield the next time the gastric wave comes. Bit quick on the draw there, that's fine. And yeah, because of that too, uh, you can't really stand around and rest up. Oh boy, uh, get that paradox down. Uh. I don't. Well, I shouldn't have used this without knowing what it actually fucking does. <laughs> Also, do I still have fr flame rot on? I do. Yeah, why did it ask me to go in a direction when I cast that? Whatever. Oh, I've got blink on. That's why I keep uh, going all over the place. Really annoying when that happens. Yeah, I guess that, yeah. Oh, we, we, we found the stairs. What am I doing? Yeah, we need to get the hell out of here. Didn't even get any good items out of all that. But yeah, basically the game sometimes gives you random horrible things that you can poke for. Random horrible effects, if you so choose. And usually not too much benefit. Oh, I can't actually... S How do I even have line of sight to those guys, then? Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Okay, that's a pretty good paradox effect, I guess. Not gonna complain about that one. Oh, and the portal would have been right there, too. That wouldn't have been too far to go. Oh, did I just accidentally kill my dwarf buddy there? I was going for the one on the left. So yeah, this here marks the destination where we wanted to take our escort. Do I really want to touch that? We'll do one more. Okay, yeah, shrivels and disappears. The most common effect you get is it just spawns a monster and you fight it. And you get some experience and an item. It's not really worth the risk. I think I lost my first alchemist from just stupidly poking a tentacle for no good reason. Something's going on in the other room there. Involving power tools. That is a rock thrower. Uh, okay, shields up. Okay, that's him dead. Could have sworn this thing... I can't believe I'm disappointed by the radius of this thing, but I could have sworn it had a better radius than just seven... Have we maxed that out? We have, too. That's as good as it gets. Okay, whatever. Just use all the traditional AoE we have. I think this one's AoE, too. Uh, is that a rock thrower again? I don't think I see any rock throwers. But yeah, rock throwers are awful. They just do ridiculous physical damage and knock you back so that they just keep throwing rocks at you over and over again. I mean, I say over and over again. Really, they throw rocks at you twice, and that's usually enough to kill you. So, yeah. Generally, generally want to keep an eye out for those guys. Good times. Man, this is the craziest Daikara I have ever seen. So many enemies. It's like so many big rooms full of enemies. Good for showing off the power of the class, at least. Yeah. 
Man, I think I gotta level this thing up. What was it? The, uh... Induce Anomaly. Yeah, 26 Paradox isn't really gonna cut it anymore. Oh yeah, we've got this ridiculous thing actually actively increasing our Paradox. <clears throat> we wanna, might want to put points in this thing too. Actually, we should probably also put this time shield on auto use. Because, yeah, I've been forgetting to use it so far. Or actually, yeah, that's right. You know what it was? Yeah, we have. This isn't a sustain, but there's no reason not to just use it all the time. So we have this one on auto use. So, yeah, we are almost never going to manually cast that thing. Since, yeah, it's an instant, anyways. Okay, so I remember why we put that up with the sustains now. guys. Oh, there's a... I didn't even notice him. There's a... There's a rare guy right there. Chaos Orbs. That is... What was that again? Oh, that's the new uh, writhing one, I think. Or no. What was this guy again? Oh, right. He's a... Yeah, he's a temporal mage. Okay, so that probably explains why we're doing so little damage. He probably has time resist. Or temporal resistance. But not physical, which is why that other stuff is good on him. Man, this floor is huge and has tons of enemies. Oh, now I got a room full of doors and buildings, and there's gonna be the big building with a bunch of bullshit in it. This is, yeah, one of the special rooms that has a random chance to spawn in this area. It's pretty bad news. Again, it's one of those stupid optional things that you can choose to poke to kill yourself if you're an idiot. Which means that we're gonna do it. Okay, here we go. Door sealed off. Probably sealed for a good reason. You probably don't want to open it. I want to open it. Yeah. Okay, how many how many stone throwers? That's the big question. Looks like we only got one. That's fine. We're actually just going to get him to fuck off so he doesn't knock us back. Actually, no, we want him to knock us back. Okay, good start. That killed our shield and even did a bit of damage to us. What else we got? Okay, we got the stone thrower. Wow, Paradox Mage is ridiculous. Like, I don't usually die to this encounter. But I often die to this encounter, and we are doing crazy good right now, I gotta say. Yeah, you just fuck off while I deal with your friends here. In fact, we're even gonna, yeah, burn off a little bit of Paradox. Oh, there's another boulder thrower. Um, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, here we go. I don't want to be between these guys. What do we do? What do we do? I think we just 
hope that he doesn't kill us? Or what am I saying? We can just move out of his line of sight. There. Problem solved. Oh, wow. That must have been a crit right there. 400 temporal damage. This thing does not... 195. Yeah, that was a crit. That was a crit that just happened there. And now from this position, yeah, the stone thrower... Uh, will just, yeah, come right up to us. We dispel him, heal ourselves. Oh, shit, there's two of them. This one's at full health. Okay, we do this shit. That shit. This shit. There we go. Ooh, Skull Cleaver. That's fun. Skull Cleaver is actually a really, really good tier 2 axe. If you're uh, into the axe thing. I'm more into the time magic thing, so we're going to probably not equip that. Uh, this thing's alright. Not disengage though. Yeah, we're gonna keep what we got. Oh wow, we got two good. Oh, oh right, skull cleavers are tier one. We got two really good axes. Jesus. Should have played. It should have been an axe man. Wow, was this the th was this the run where I was kept on complaining about how bad of luck we were having with the equipment? I think this might still be that same run where we're having really shitty luck with equipment, because this is all crap. I can see you there, little doggy. Can I cast spells at him? Nah, not through walls. I guess that makes sense, since otherwise you could just blindly cast spells through walls all the time and just kill everything that way. Oh, I love this one. Actually, what is this? I don't think this is even a dedicated, uh... Actually, no, I'm thinking of... Yeah, I think... I think this is from an album, like a, a Toho, like, fan arranged album, where every single track on the album is a uh, different remix of Chirno's theme. I think this is the one where that, yeah, where that comes from, and it's kind of hilarious. Like, it sounds like a stupid idea. It's like, oh, really, we're gonna have like 10 different remixes of the same freaking song or 10 different arrangements of the same song on one album and it turns out that there's like a ton of variants you can have just based on like the essentially just the basic chord progression and uh sort of melody of Chirno's theme from uh which game did this appear in shit which what was actually the first game where we uh where we first hear cheer this uh yeah Chirno's theme Beloved Tomboyish Girl, that's the name of the song this is based on. Oh right, it was, uh, yeah, it was, now I'm blanking on the name, but Toho 5, I think it was, or Toho 6. Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, that's the one I'm thinking of. Man, that was just the first floor that we just went through, too. Yeah, I think I actually do want to work on my spell crit, weirdly enough, because I love being able to one-shot dudes. Oh, 
Really, I should just be patient, probably, and just not cast anything when I uh, when my cooldowns are. Just just go between the two lasers and don't bother with the other one, just to keep my paradox level down. Because like, what is it? This is nine paradox, nine paradox. Oh, ten paradox. Yeah, they're all ten paradox. Okay, I guess I might as well just use it then. For some reason, I thought it would be like way more than the others because it's so much better than the others. But yeah, if that's how it's going to be. Give me a sneeze. Hey, I managed to hit the mute button that time. In time. Now we're just getting all the good Toho jazz tonight. Yeah, I think I had like a... Yeah, I think last time I streamed this game, my... Uh, my video game jazz playlist was at like six hours of uh, music. Over the course of the last week, I've bumped that up to, I think, eight or so. I'd like to get up to ten, just because that's like... Seems to be the standard for like YouTube... Just ridiculously long compilations of anything. That's like the thing, it's like ten hours of whatever on YouTube. Oh wow, we actually got the temporal rift. I think this is, yeah, this is the way that you go to actually unlock the Temporal Warden. Yeah, we'll do some Temporal Rifting. So yeah, this is a, sort of a little side area that has a random chance to spawn on Floor 3 of Daikara. Oh yeah, these guys are like completely immune to Temporal Damage, aren't they? Fuck. Uh, okay, Physical Damage. I should not have come here. This was a bad idea. Okay, what do I have that doesn't do temporal damage? I can do these fireballs, but it scales with mind power, so it's like 50 damage. I can do this thing. 24 blight damage, that's not great. Do I have anything that can damage these guys other than the wave? I guess I can just keep doing the wave. There. Just wave our way to victory. Oh, hey, apparently we have some kind of thorns on our character. What? Oh, wow, we do, like, 50 damage when enemies hit us. I didn't even realize that. This, uh, what is this thing? Propulsion Blast is going to be the path to victory here. Doesn't this say it does physical damage? Okay, so it's like 50 physical damage and 50 temporal damage. So that's not great. I hope all the enemies after this, because this first floor is kind of like an odd one out. The rest of the temporal rift is completely different from this. So I hope that the rest of the enemies are not these frickin' temporal... Although the boss is probably temporal resistant, now that I think of it. Oh, this is a mistake. I should not have come here. Oh, 
Let's maybe, or let's try this thing. There, we got the Web of Fate now. Oh, and I'm stunned again. What do we do? What do we do? Oh, let's get these guys the fuck out of here. There, I forgot we could do that. Yeah, we can just banish them away from us. Just random teleport away. Oh, and of course there's another one on the other side. What do we do? What do we do? We're in a tight spot. We'll do this thing. Keep them away from us. Though, since they're temporal resistant, this might not even work. Hey! Ooh, got us a level up, too. I don't even know what to do for generic points anymore. I guess we just keep doing this web of fate. Oh, it's instant usage, too. We might as well put this on autocast. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of amazing. Ooh, this one's pretty good, too. I'd love an extra radius on this. What's the range on our spells? It's only 10, so this is enough range to cast our spells already. Yeah, I think we keep doing this, that damage displacement. Seems like it has potential. And then what did we say we were going to do here? Not sure we'd actually decided. This shield could be really good. Ooh, that's a stun. I like stuns. It's temporal damage, which doesn't, which doesn't really help us in this area. Oh, also, we've got so many Chronomancy spells that we might as well start stacking this up. Just the one point will be fine for now. Okay, whatever. If he's not going to come to me, I'm... Okay, never mind. He is going to come to me. There we go. You know what? Yeah, we do do enough uh, temporal damage to kind of make it worth casting temporal spells. Yeah, I guess just the chance to crit makes it worth uh, casting temporal spells on these guys, even though they have, like, 90% temporal resistance. Because, yeah, if we crit, then, uh, yeah, we still do full damage. What the hell are you guys doing? Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, I can just hit them with a stick, too. That actually does more damage than our, my frickin' uh, time magic. If I can actually hit them. Which I suppose I shouldn't rely on. Actually, I should use this when enemies are uh, visible and in adjacent, because that usually means I'm in trouble. That guy's actually stuck, so I'm not going to bother messing with him. I think we just go to the exit. These guys are a pain in the ass. I shouldn't be trying to fully... There's no treasure on this floor anyways. There's absolutely no reason 
to be doing the full explore here. Okay, so yeah, now we go to like weird, like alternate reality versions of areas we've been to before. So yeah, we're gonna fight the Lumberjack Village guy again, except he's got a random rare dredgling with him, which is awful. I didn't think this level spawned enemies other than this dude. Um, okay, the question is who can we kill quicker? This guy's got less health, so we're gonna banish this guy to the nether zone. Uh, this guy can fire the lasers. Oh boy. Oh boy. What do we got? What do we got? Okay, good. That is excellent. Okay, we're gonna hit him with that while we run away. Yeah, and then we just uh, basically play keep away with this guy. Easy peasy. Cool. Oh, we got a purple mace. Yeah, I didn't know that enemies, like regular enemies, could actually spawn in here. Uh, no, that's crap. Okay, now we're back to the, yeah, Daikara Mountains, only different. And also horrible. These, uh, monsters here are bad news. Okay, do these guys resist temporal? Because if they do, then just fucking kill me now. Uh, 25%. That's not the... That's bad, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I, I, I can live with 25%. Yeah, we're fine. Everything's fine. That was a crit. Yeah, these guys are... E even without the temporal resistance, those guys are always really tanky. And here's the boss, or the boss of this floor, at least. There's one more after this. He resists temporal too, but not that much. Oh, we're slowed. Did he just go invisible? Okay, no, he's just out of sight. So that tether I put on him there gives him a random chance to uh, teleport back to the space where I tethered him and then deal him some damage when that happens. Good for keeping enemies away from you. There's no treasure in this area, so there's not really any sense exploring. I just like killing things. Especially things that take frickin' forever and like a half dozen spells. There's actually an element of truth to that. I've played a few different games where people complain about enemies being like way too tanky. And I've like generally not had that problem. People say that about bo the Borderlands game. Which I guess is another similar like kind of Diablo-esque type of game. But yeah, the main complaint I hear about the Borderlands series is that the enemies are bullet sponges. Takes way too long to take him down, whereas I've never really had that problem with uh, Borderlands. I like how the encounters are, like, a bit more drawn out and you have to actually, like, have a strategy where you can, where you survive the enemies, as opposed to just, like, headshotting them all and taking them out in one go. And even then, there are, str there are, if you get a good enough weapon, you often can just take out the enemies in that game with one headshot. Or I guess once you go to, like, New Game Plus or the whatever, the game's equivalent of Nightmare Mode. Then it gets kind of annoying. Like, yeah, then then at that point, I guess, the enemies do get uh, pretty 
ridiculous where you've got to be going with like nothing but slag strats and you always using the enemy's elemental weaknesses. It's a lot more restrictive in terms of the allowable strategies. Okay, so are these guys... What was it? Staff of Bones what? Couldn't see what he said there. Anyways, um, do you resist temporal shit? He does quite a bit, but he resists everything else too, so I think it'll be fine. Can't tether him, so... Yeah, this will be good enough. Boom, boom, kaboom. Just cycle the spells. Oh, right, and yeah, there's two of him. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, right, so this guy likes to play keep away too. Which could get kind of annoying for me. Can they breathe underwater? Like, do they, do enemies drown? I think enemies can drown. I'm pretty sure I've seen, like, enemies drown before. I don't know if this guy... Well, I, guess, I guess we'll see, eventually. Because, yeah, both of them... They're, yeah, just waiting on out there. Yeah, these guys seem to share an HP total. Oop, um, yeah, I should pay attention to what I'm actually fucking doing. Also, wow, all my sustains are gone. No, oh, no. Wait, seriously? 4% chance and I... Do the anomaly thing? Really? Okay, this should get him. Oh, he's out of range. This should get him. Nope. This should get him. Okay, it actually did that time. So yeah, once, once you kill one, they both die. Okay, uh, both of those sound extremely promising. Okay, we got the Staff of Arcane Supremacy. It's part of a set of items. Arcane damage. Okay, so this is like a... Yeah, unique for... Uh, whatever you call them. Archmages. Whoa! Remove up to three detrimental magical effects! That is insane! It's a tier three. Same power as the one we've got on. We lose melee damage and physical crit chance. Who gives a shit? We can attune it to temporal damage. We lose spell save. We gain tons of spell power. We lose crit chance, which hurts a bit, but I think I'm going to take it. Oh, can we not attune this one? Oh, that would be... Uh, where does it say whether or not you can... Okay, yeah, we can't... Uh, can't use Command Staff with that one, so it's only... Because the thing with Command Staff is it lets you change the element of uh, your staff to whatever you want. So the, the elemental damage bonus, which is the main thing that makes staffs good for mages. So yeah, we can attune this to temporal, and now we're doing plus like 20% temporal damage, which is like all of our damage. Staff of Arcane Supremacy does not let you do that, which means that it is not worthwhile. Seriously, what? so what on here tells you if you can... Oh, there we go. Talent granted, command staff. If we go here, we lose command staff. So, okay, that's not worth having then. It's probably the same with the Staff of Bones. That's probably... Yep, that is a Necromancer staff. And it... Oh, it does have command staff. Doesn't really have anything else that we like. Gives you a bunch of spell masteries, which basically increases your 
It's uh, kind of... Ooh, plus 12% crit chance, though, and some extra spell power. I think that's actually worth... What, and what do we lose? We lose two points of magic and some melee damage. And melee crit chance? Hell yeah. Oh, but... Oh, but 20%... Or no, we keep command staff. Yeah. I want the staff of bones. Oh. Um, I would... Okay, apparently the staff talks. Um, I don't want to offend him by asking him if he speaks. I just want to... Oh. Okay, but he doesn't have the... Because, yeah, mages have a special ability where they can choose literally any element. Whereas the Staff of Bones seems to still retain the old version. Um, okay, let's talk to the staff again. Can I... Okay, let's, let's have a conversation with our new magic staff. I am not a necromancer, but he doesn't need to know that. Um, what else can you do? Okay, yeah, fair enough. Points. Okay, so do, do I give up 20% temporal damage for a bunch of spell crit? Maybe I do. Cold. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth it after all. Oh, we got these other tier threes now too. Oh, critical multi. Or no, there. Our old staff gave us critical multiplier. Man, that twelve percent crit chance though. Okay, maybe we could. Maybe one of those other staffs gives us twelve percent crit. Uh, so, okay, lose the melee stuff, don't give a shit. Lose magic, don't give a shit. We can attune, we can attune that away. We gain spend spell power and crit chance here. And it has an active ability. A shitty one, but still, it has it. Okay, so that's... I believe that's just a straight upgrade. So yeah, we'll take that for sure. I actually don't know where blue sits in the hierarchy of magic items. It seems to be better than uh, the reds, but it like it, it isn't better than them all the time. Okay, lose melee damage, gain calm. That's pretty good. Lose crit malt, that sucks. Life free gen sucks. Lose spell power, lose spell crit. Okay, that one is not worth it. Okay, so we'll ditch just ditch these then. And I don't know. Is it is it am I committing murder if I transmogrify the staff of bones? Like he he can talk. Like we had a conversation with him. If I just turn him into gold coins. Have I, have, will I have blackened myself by doing that? I'm curious. Okay, looks like the game doesn't do anything special. <laughs> That's a bit of a shame. It would have been funny to have him, like, a, I don't know, do some kind of weird death scream or something. Okay, we'll keep the severed arm just because it's a severed arm, and that's funny. Oh yeah, I forgot to eat the heart of the Sandworm Queen. Of course. Why didn't you guys remind me? So that basically gets you the equivalent of a level up. Good times. Uh, yeah, we're kind of starved for useful generics right now. What's this energy thing? Uh, that seems really good. That seems really good. That seems crazy good. That's alright. I don't know if we have the category, or we definitely don't have the category points right now, but I think I want an inscription the next time we get a category point. Okay, I think I like the idea of stacking speed, so I think we'll keep pumping this up. Actually, no, we'll get some damage. We need more basic damage skills, because, yeah, we're not killing things as quickly as I'd like. Yeah, I guess we just keep doing this thing.
Yes, more crit chance. All right, I absolutely do not need to explore this area. Oh, I should have actually checked to see if that cashmere robe was better than my equipment. That might have been a tier three item, in which case it might have actually been better than uh, what I have on right now. Oh yeah, and we had barely explored this floor uh, before we took that detour. That dog down there doesn't see me for some reason. Oh, right, because, yeah, I'm psychic, and I can see... I can sense him, but he doesn't actually see me. <laughs> this happens all the time, and it's funny, every time. It's like you get the, the little drake hatchlings in the front, the big one in the back, and invariably the big one breathes on the little ones, and, like, they resist the element, so it doesn't do a ton of damage, but... It, uh, in fact, it doesn't, doesn't do any damage. But it makes them all slow. Which is always funny. Is that two of them? Is this a different one, or the same one just, like, move aside or something? Who cares, they're both dead. Even if it was just one of them, they're both dead. Ah, uh, so this is annoying. He didn't even do the funny thing where he breathes on all of his children. Lame. Did I forget to put my sustains back on? Looks like they're all up. Uh, this guy's not dying fast enough. Yeah, I definitely need more damage on that number three laser. Ideally, we kill pretty much every enemy with nothing but lasers. Yeah, sure, we'll do that. Oh, that was a quick one. Oh, is this not the boss floor? Oh yeah, that's right, there's two versions of the boss floor in this area. You've got one that's just a big open area with the boss in the center, and then you've got one that's a regular area. So yeah, we got the regular version of the boss floor right here. Assuming that I didn't just misremember and that there are actually five floors. Oh no! Ah, uh, so you can fuck off for the time being. You guys can fuck off forever. And then you can fuck off forever. Did I just get hit there with some crazy swirl of darkness? Oh god, we got anomalies! 42%, when did that happen? Oh, this is an instant ability, too. You know what? Yeah, auto-use. Auto-use when available. Why the fuck not? Because, yeah, I think that one's guaranteed to only create minor anomalies, which are never really that bad. Although this one right here is kind of annoying. Um, oh, he just opened up a hole in the mountain there. That is not a great place for there to be a hole. Okay, never mind. Actually, that was a good hole. We just, like, yeah, breathe time out of it. Oh, 
It was actually the best possible place for there to be a hole. Yeah, okay, so yeah, this is just the regular boss of Daikara. Uh, so that was an anomaly. Oh yeah, I guess anomalies, yeah, do shit like that sometimes. Uh, that is a buzzsaw, man. Uh, so yeah, let's not auto-use that when available anymore. <laughs> also, we gotta level up somewhere along the way. There we go. That is insane. Reduced duration of detrimental effects is insane. We are going to be maxing this out next for sure. Then... Well, active... Oh, this is a stain. Temporal damage. Oh, that's actually really good. Except no, we said we were going to work on... Right, damage next. Oh, hey, yeah, now we can get... Ooh, thick skin. Thick skin over this thing. I think we do, actually, because our biggest danger, even more so than status effects, is being one-shotted with our low defenses right now. So, yes, we do want... Uh, do we go for the boss first, or do we go for Buzzsaw Man? How about this? We get Buzzsaw Man out of here, and then we do the boss. Uh, boink. Oh, hey, two for one. Helm of Dwarven Emperors. I don't think I've seen that one before. Sounds like something for melee classes, so it's probably no good for me, but still, we'll take a look. Um, actually, the sprite looks familiar. Invoke the sun. I like the sound of that already. To cause a flare, increases with a spell power. Increases magic and will, blindness and immunities and shit. It's only tier two though, and we have a tier three helm already. That's sad. We lose a bunch of stats. Oh, it's just strength and dex, which we don't care about. I actually like the trade-off in stats there. Lose resistance, that's fine. Blindness and confusion immunity, and a bit of extra armor, too. I think we take this. Light radius? Yeah. That's very, very slightly better than uh, the one we had on. I think it's, yeah, safe to say that we're not going back to the old wizard's hats yet. Rune of the Rift inflicts 300 temporal damage. It sends them four turns into the future. Oh, that's like the same as the this banishing spell that we use, time skip. Is it worth a inscription slot? I don't know. In general, I like I don't think I ever like having uh, offensive inscriptions. Pretty much all defensive all the way. Um, okay. Man, the Paradox build sure creeps up on you. It's like you're just casting spells and then all of a sudden anomalies everywhere. Okay, yeah, there's generally... Generally when you see dragons, there's more dragons where you don't see dragons. That that was a convoluted sentence there, but I believe what I said was correct. think of what day it is today because I'm like I'm looking at the clock like do I have work tomorrow what time do I have work tomorrow and then obviously I have work tomorrow because I have work every day for last week and the next week but what day is it actually today what day do I what time do I need to be up who knows it doesn't matter I'll just get less sleep Uh, daggers, daggers, rings. 
Okay, so this is... Okay, that's a tier two. And it's a crappy one, so we don't care. Alright, so at that... Oh man, we failed two escorts. Pathetic. Anyway, so that was... Where is it? So yeah, that was the fourth of your... Uh, sort of your second set of story subquests or uh, story main quests so the next one is the island of dread so yeah dread fell and that kind of marks the halfway point of the game do we go there right now or do we do some side dungeons first probably side dungeons i use dread fell's pretty horrible so I usually like doing pretty much all of the side dungeons on the uh, continent before going to Dreadfell. So we're going to do that, I think. But before we do that... Oh, no! Um, yes. Wow, we're level, level 24 already. It's impressive. Uh, so yeah, starting level 24, you have a chance to get this random map encounter. If you reject it, you'll never see it again. But doing it is one-third of the requirements to unlocking a new race. We're going to do it. This is probably the deadliest thing you can do on uh, in the first half of the game. This is a, There are some awful enemies in this... Uh, that's and that's the awful thing that you do that they can do that these re green guys can pull you towards them which wasn't really anything that bad uh right now but yeah imagine like a big open room that's full of enemies and then they do that to pull you into the middle of them that is why this uh that is why this dungeon right here is bullshit in fact this is probably the most common source of deaths for me in this game right now. I have probably lost more characters to the Dark Crypt than any other dungeon. Which is stupid when you think of it, because this is a completely optional dungeon. You can just choose not to do it if you're having trouble with it. But, uh, yeah, I, I am completely stupid, so here we are. What is this shit? Does he have temporal... Defense for some reason. He has a bit of it, but we should be doing more damage than this. There we go. Arrows. <laughs> I don't like this. Oh, they turn invisible. Shit. Okay, uh, yeah, open rooms like that, you just freaking back away as soon as you see them and wait for them to come to you, because otherwise you can get dragged into the middle. Let's try from the other end. Corruptors. Yeah, a lot of elite enemies in this dungeon, too. Can't even see this guy. Okay, looks like he's dead. Okay. I think there's... I don't even re even remember if there being four levels in this dungeon, but I'm just going to assume that it's four, because that's what all the others have been. Ooh, a statue. Yeah, let's poke the statue. 
Nothing bad could come of this. Okay, nothing happened. Nothing bad came of that. For, for as ominous, for as, like, you know, ominous and intimidating as they look, the statues almost never do anything that bad, really. Oh, and it's you again. So this is an elite rare. Was it... Glora Resra. This is a corruptor... Oh, this is like a corruptor corruptor. Oh, shield offense. Is this a... Uh, uh, like a warrior corruptor? I'd actually be fine with that, because that means he's not going to use any of his uh, rare talents. That is the talents gifted to him by being a rare monster. Fuck, 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 fuck. Okay. That turned out alright. Oh, he's still alive. Okay, I want to get close. Shit. There we go. I want to get close to him, just so he doesn't keep running away from me. Also, yeah, I guess I can get, just keep chaining that. Okay, this... I didn't even notice this. This time skip actually lasts about as long as its cooldown does. So I can basically keep these guys, like, lost in... Oh, he's not dead. He's just invisible. I can basically keep these guys lost in time and space, like, forever. Assuming it hits them. Fuck. Okay. Let's get out of here. Just for a little while. Okay, these guys don't seem to be taking too much. There we go. Oh wow, I've, I've, I'm actually really low on health. And now we've got anomalies. And that was just, like, right by the stairs of this uh, floor right here. That was just, like, the first thing that we see on the way to the rest of the bull crap. Uh, this was a bad idea. I should not have done that. Can't even see what's going on. Let's just cast spells in their general direction. Hey, we got them both again. It's like the third time in a row where we've encountered two rares at once and killed them both at once. It's almost like this class has crazy good AoE capabilities or something. Don't these guys usually come in threes? Because there's no, no space for a third one. Okay, another tier three. Blah, blah, blah. Lose critical mult, lose spell power. There's like nothing good about this staff at all. Actually, that's not true. It has resistances and it has more damage. More damage increasing percent. Are we channeling fire right now? What the fuck? No wonder we're not one-shotting dudes anymore with our basic spells. Okay, yeah, plus temporal damage. This is bad times right here. Oh wow, there's a big green blob coming for me and I can't move. 
Also, what the fuck is going on with my face? Oh, I've got... I don't even know what that is. I've got Christmas trees growing on me for some reason. The fuck is that? Oh, I've got worms. Uh... Yeah, that's probably not going to be good for me in the long run. I don't even know what the fuck just happened. I just took two hits in a row for no reason at all. Did this guy have plus speed or something? I don't even know what the fuck just happened there. He has no plus speed. He got to attack twice in a row and I don't know why. Oh, Soul Rot. That was... Wait, did I have a... Like, like a dot on me that did 300 damage per turn? I wasn't slowed or anything. If anything, I should have been getting bonus turns. Corrosive Worm. Okay, it was the Corrosive Worm. I should have actually read uh, what that debuff does. So yeah, the Corrosive Worm is the delayed, basically a ticking time bomb on you after a short... So yeah. So I got... No, oh no, the Corrosive Worm does acid damage. So no, I, and I, I still have it on me. So the Corrosive Worm didn't explode. Classification Hex. I have no idea why this guy got to cast two spells in a row. Uh, Blood Spray, does he have an instant? I guess he must have some kind of crazy instant that does 300 damage. I mean, he has an instant, but it's not a crazy one. That's only 60 damage. He's got Drain, that's probably what he hit me with. And what did it say? He said it hit me with Soul Rot. So we know that he did a Soul Rot. Secret of the Eternals. Timeless. Like, yeah, he had something to hit me for 300 Blight damage. Okay, yeah, so it must have been Drain. He got like a crit or something with the Drain. And then got the Soul Rot as well, but I still have no idea why he got to cast two of them in a row. Oh well. It happens. That really sucks. That was a good run, and none of the typical bullshit that happens with this dungeon is actually the way that I died. I just took a ton of damage for seemingly no reason. Oh, it says he casts Blood Spray. What is Blood Spray? Okay, so he did Blood Spray, and he did Soul Rot. Neither of those is an instant. Oh well. It happens. And that was good timing, at least, because that'll give us, uh... Gives us, like, an hour to do what I was kind of secretly hoping we would have time to do anyways. That's really, that really sucks that we lost that uh, Temporal Mage, though. That was... A really strong character, and that felt like kind of a bullshit death. I have no idea uh, why we got uh, taken out there, just with like the two spells in a row. Oh well. So, 